Praise the Lord. We have a very special guest with us tonight. We are so honored and privileged to have with us Senator Mary Kiffmeyer. And we are so honored and we are so honored and privileged that you would be with us in this meeting tonight. Senator Kiffmeyer is a former uh, Minnesota State Representative. She is the former Minnesota Secretary of State, and she is, as we already mentioned, a current state senator and the next president of the United States. <laughs> senator Kiffmeyer, these young people really want to make a difference. They want to change the world. They want to be good examples. And we really appreciate the fact that you would come and be with us tonight. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for inviting me. Um, I just am thrilled to be here. It's already been an encouragement to me to participate in your music. A little joy of the Lord always is great especially after a long day at the Capitol, a little different kind of world. So it's definitely a real encouragement and a double encouragement because I'm seeing young people, seeing your enthusiasm for the Lord. And that is so encouraging to me because freedom is only free for one generation unless the next generation takes up the cause. And that is true, not only in the freedom in regards to our governing, but our freedom in the Lord. Because each generation has to take that mantle on their own shoulders. And the mantle for my generation is to encourage. To encourage the torch, yes, intended. <laughs> to encourage the flame of passion uh, for the Lord, and that's really important. But first of all, I understand there's about 14 states represented here. Congratulations, what a great uh, sense of enthusiasm that we get 14 states. And on behalf of the state of Minnesota, welcome to Minnesota. But you are here for a purpose. And it's so exciting because I usually, when I speak on the Senate floor or speak, anybody in the room might recognize the roots of scripture in my comments. However, here tonight, I don't have to bother with all that. I can just say it, right? <laughs> Matter of fact, one of my favorite times to speak is on Martin Luther King Day to an African-American Baptist community. And it's so fun as I am saying my, uh, my speaking without referencing actual scripture to have the brethren, the brothers and sisters in the room recognize it. And it was especially fun one time when they said, preach it, sister, preach it. <laughs> okay, great, glad to do that. And so I know that one of your passions is to serve the Lord so is mine. And one of the things that matters so much to me is a scripture that says about those who serve in government that we are called to be ministers of God. Can you imagine that in government? But those who are in authority are called to be ministers of God, to reward those who do what's right and punish those who do what's wrong. But the most important thing is I share that with ministers in that calling. But the roots of my calling actually started as the oldest of 14 children growing up in a very poor home. And if you're the oldest, you get called a lot to serve a lot and to take care of those in your family. That same heart has stayed with me and my mom and dad who worked so hard and their words that they would always say, my mom would say when I'd leave the house, she'd say, now work hard and be good. And I did. And so here I am today. Work hard and be good. 
There's even a hashtag on Twitter, by the way, work hard and be good. Wow, Mom, just look how the generation that she passed on to me has now made it on Twitter. My mom would say, what, Twitter? <laughs> but the tools may change, but the heart doesn't. And so retaining your passion for the Lord is so important. I was asked one time at a conference where I was flown out to California to a lawyer's conference. And I'm not a lawyer, by the way. I'm a registered nurse by profession. But they asked me to come and speak. But as we were, uh, I had some young people around with me. And they asked me, now how did you, I asked them, how did you get to be a lawyer? I love hearing the story. Tell me your story. How did you get there? So I listened to them all. It's great to do that. Well, they turned it on me and said, well, how did you get to where you are today? And I answered them. I said, I took the jobs that nobody else wanted. I did them well, and I did them with enthusiasm. Now, that's not the usual answer you get from a politician, right? I took the jobs nobody else wanted, did them well, and with enthusiasm. But you know, unbeknownst to us, behind the law young lawyers was the main speaker of the conference a constitutional attorney arguing in front of the U.S. Supreme Court many times again. And he piped up and said, that's how I got to where I am today. This constitutional, nationally recognized attorney. All right? It works because that's God's heart. God calls us to a servant heart. No matter where we are, God calls us to do it well and with enthusiasm. That's all pure scripture, right? And so I have a placard right by my kitchen sink. It says, my worship is part of my work. And I do all things. And the... And the reason why I let my light shine so that my Father in heaven gets the glory, not me. The only glory I want is when the time comes, hopefully I got a little ways to go yet, but when the time comes that I will stand in front of him and I can say I was as faithful to you, not because of anything that happened in the world, because that's my passion. Now, one of the greatest risks to your life of service, though, will be the government of you. The government of you, especially as young people going forward. But for any minister, we've all seen the cause of ministry greatly harmed by personal failures. And so it's so important for you to practice right now in the little things of your life, the little decisions Finding a penny on the road, and as my dad would say, <laughs> mom and dad both had good things to say, it's not yours just because you found it, no matter the size. And so that personal commitment to integrity has been something that has been so important to me. Guard your heart. Guard your ways. And have that pledge and that integrity that no matter what, whether the world applauds you or curses you, that that is your pledge, and it is because of the God that you honor, that we all honor together. But you're here this whole weekend, this whole time, to be instructed, to be encouraged, and to be lifted up. And I'm so grateful for those who are investing in your lives. And so you're listening, following through, and honoring that, because in your own time, you will have those opportunities to take maybe the job nobody else wants to do it well and with enthusiasm, or in leadership as I've had those same opportunities. And so it really does matter. Matters personally, matters to those around you. And so I just want you to know from just one person in government, just one person actually says, you go for it. You rise up, give glory to the Lord, do your work. Be found faithful. Thank you. God bless.